Good Monday morning, everybody. How you doing? It's good to see you all, digitally, at least. Hope you're doing well. Let me get this chat up so I can see all your beautiful faces. We got Sierra in the chat. Valdair, hello. Kate Morphis, good to see you. Ulysses, Sam Peterson, Rodney Lewis. Evening from the UK. Evening, Rodney. Are you having some tea for the evening? I just finished my coffee. Feeling fine. Feeling good. What are you guys all sipping on this morning or evening? Is it wine o'clock, perhaps? Let me know. Hi, Julia from Switzerland. Julia, thank you so much for hanging out this weekend during my uh, personal Behance stream. That was super fun. Kathleen Hergels, thanks. Woke up like this, literally. So nice. What's up, Val, by the way? Good to see you. So thank you, Shauna, for that awesome illustration stream right before this. We have a lot of fresco illustration streams today. We've got Shauna starting off the day. I'm going to be back at 2.30 to do a sketch party for fresco, which basically means I'm going to have some sketches. You're going to pick which one I do. It's going to be fun. Judge Kathleen. I know. I feel like very judge, judgy. Perhaps this is like a nun's habit or clown. I don't know. I like it though, I'm feeling it. <laughs> You're having coffee with collagen? Nice, Cecilia. I just had coffee with coconut oil. It was so good. Tea here at 4 a.m. New Zealand. What's up, Steve? What kind of tea you drinking? All right, so if you're new to the Daily Creative Challenge, I'm Kathleen, this is week two. So we're gonna be doing this live stream every morning until Friday. And we're gonna be going over a different Photoshop workflow every day. So today we're gonna to be doing photo editing. Let me show you my screen super quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Get that gone, cool. So if you're new to the challenge, like I said, you can come here. This is behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Uh, and you can change that end part, the Photoshop part, to Illustrator or XD uh, if you want to see the landing pages for the other challenges as well. So you can register for the challenge right here. And then we can check out the different challenges that we've done so far. We played with the frame tool on Friday. That was super cool. Uh, we did a couple simple challenges in the beginning, like layers and blend modes. But today we're going to do some photo editing in Photoshop using Camera Raw. Now, Camera Raw is something that I don't have a ton of experience with, and when I first started using it, I was like, totally mind blown. Um, it's a really powerful photo editing tool built into Photoshop. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your favorite program. Yeah, James, photo editing, woo woo. Asif, how are you, mentor? I'm good, how are you, students? <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Yeah, register for the challenges at that link. Perfect. All right, so specifically for this challenge, we are going to be adding life to a night scene. So taking a, an image that's already dark and kind of enhancing the colors. And something that's really cool about this challenge is I asked my good friend Kendall Plant, she's a, a creative director on the studio team at Adobe, uh, to let me use one of her beautiful photographs from when she went to Japan. So you can download her beautiful photograph right here and edit along with me. So no watermarks this time. Just if you do post it, please give credit to Kendall. And if you want to check out her work, please do so. Maybe somebody in the chat can find her Behance or Instagram and share it. She's an amazing photographer and designer and friend. Alrighty, let's jump back to our registration page so I can show you quickly uh, Discord. So Discord is a way that we all communicate when the stream is over, if you want to get feedback for your current challenge or feedback even on another design challenge, maybe you're doing for school or just for fun. Uh, so if you want to join Discord, you can join us here, bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. Very exciting. Uh, and then this is what Discord actually looks like when you download it. You can also use it on the browser or on your phone. Um, if you use it on the browser, you don't have to download anything. You just literally go to discord.com. Net. Either way, go to bit.ly slash PS Discord. And then where you're really going to want to hang out, let me open this up a little bit bigger, is right here, current challenge. If I click that, we see Sam giving some awesome feedback. Thank you, Sam. You are doing the good work. We can scroll and see people's challenges. Doris has this really cool frame challenge from Friday. Awesome. Even some color editing. That's awesome. This is very cool too, another frame challenge by Angie. Of course there's GIFs, because everybody loves a good GIF. 
yeah, so this is where you can post your work. And we see Frederick has already even posted uh, his edit for today. Won't be able to watch the stream, so I played at home. Nice job, Frederick. Thank you so much for uploading that. So I'll show you how to upload your work at the end of this. And then after we get feedback on our work from Discord, we can upload it to Behance to our play at home project. So we have our photo grids going on and we just add a new one every day. And if that all makes sense, let's just jump into Photoshop, get started. So I have my photo already open, Kendall's beautiful Tokyo night scene. And I've actually already played with some edits. So I'm gonna turn this layer back on and you can see I increased the saturation of the reflections. And I also did some spot edits right here on this main figure where I lightened around him so he becomes more of a focal point. Now you can see actually, Kendall already edited this photo with one of her uh, presets in Lightroom. I'll scroll down here. And so you can see that this photo can take on a bunch of different looks. This is a little more subdued and a little more um, on the brown and green side. There's Michael, another creative director on the studio team. Um, so there's a million different ways you can take this photo, but I'm going to show you mostly how to punch up this, the vibrance or saturation and play with the levels a little bit, and then also make those selective edits to add some light around the main figure. Hi, Kendall. Good morning. There's the star herself. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this link into chat super quick. We might have a little bit of live stream inception for a moment. Ah, spooky. I'll post that there. And if you want to go download some free Lightroom presets, Kendall has those for you. Thank you, Kendall. All right, I'm going to move myself over. Whoa. And let's get started with these edits. So I'm just going to totally close this. Perhaps. I'm not even going to save it because I'm going to show you from start how to do these edits. So I'm going to open my Kindle Plant Tokyo file open it and in the past you've only been able to use camera raw I believe with actual raw imagery or that's how it's been intended but you can use it with any uh, image file type so this is just a JPEG it's not even the raw image and we're gonna apply a camera raw filter but first before we do that let's actually make this background layer a smart object and I'll show you why that's important after I do it so if we right click on our background layer click convert to smart object and there you go now it's layer zero instead of background and you'll see this little tiny icon right here that means it's a smart object I'm just gonna rename it Tokyo night just so we know what we're working with and now let's jump into some edits everyone likes free free 99 so this is how we get to our camera raw options we're gonna go to filter at the top and we have a bunch of filter options this blur gallery is really cool and powerful um, but we're gonna play with the camera raw filter so if we go to camera raw filter right here you can also do the hotkey which is shift command a to open that let's select it and we basically just have a little powerful photo editor within Photoshop now It'll kind of float as a window in the middle, but you can also click this button here at the top to make it full screen. So it really feels like you are just diving in and editing. All right, so we have our image in the middle. One thing that I like to do is toggle these before and after views down here on the right. So if you click that, you can see them on top of each other, just before and after. And side by side so let's stick side by side for now so we can really see what we're doing and I'm actually gonna decrease the size of my big old head so I get a little bit smaller and we can see what's going on so if you've ever done any photo editing even in Instagram or in Lightroom you'll probably recognize a lot of these sliders over here in the right like exposure that's how much light is in the image you ever hear someone say like this photo is overexposed or underexposed overexposed would be too light, underexposed would be too dark. And if you are gonna take a photo and you're worried about overexposing or underexposing, I would recommend that you opt towards underexposing because if you overexpose, these pixels that turn white 
don't aren't hiding any information in them. They're literally just white pixels. But if you underexpose, you'll notice that there's a lot of information right here. You can even kind of read some of the little menu items that if I were to have overexposed this, it's just white. So you can always underexpose and then increase the exposure in the future. What's the benefit of using Camera Raw rather than Lightroom? For this case, it's really just to stay within one product. If you are really more comfortable in Photoshop, you can do that. It's also so that you can uh, make really intricate photo editing tweaks in like a photo composite. You can't composite in Lightroom, but you can composite in Photoshop. So we can edit files, save them, and continue to work on our surreal composite that has like a zebra in the desert or something. Uh, so that's a workflow that I would recommend it for. Sean says it is the same engine. Yeah, they're both super powerful. All right, so I'm just gonna take you through some of these sliders and you can play with them as you see fit. I do want to keep this scene still looking very dark, but then just punching up the saturation of the colors and these kind of bright signs. So we'll keep the shadows down a little bit, play with the whites a little bit. We don't wanna blow them out. And if you're getting kind of stuck trying to get this back to zero, sliders are like that where you're like, oh, I want it to be perfect. Uh, you can just double click on this little slide and it'll go back to zero for you. All right, so this vibrance and saturation, that's gonna help us with our endeavors to make this a little bit more vibrant and saturated. But you gotta be careful with these sliders because if you go too hard, it just starts to look a little bit crunchy, maybe a little heavy handed. So we're gonna increase it, but just a touch, maybe 10. And you can play with the saturation as well. I think I'll just keep that at zero. We'll just keep the vibrance up, saturation at zero, looks good. Now, if you wanna continue looking at more menus and options, check out this little strip here at the top. You'll see a bunch of different thumbnails for different tools. So we can even do even more intricate uh, edits with a tone curve. I'm not even gonna to touch this because it's it, you can get a little lost in it, but feel free to play in it. You can play with the detail and the sharpening. So you'll see that the detail is already increased to 25. We could increase it further or less. But let's just keep it at 25 for now. And then you can do HSL adjustments. So pick out the actual reds of the image and change their hue. So notice right here, if I go to the right, this becomes more orange and left, it becomes more red. What do we think? Do you like red or orange more? I think I'm digging more of the red because the shadows are very blue. Red and blue look pretty nice together. Maybe we'll bring out even more of those warm tones. We'll keep this as is, and then let's play with these blues and purples. Ooh, nice, I like that. Keep that zero. You can play with these magentas as well, but they're not doing much. So keep that zero as well. One other thing you can do is split toning. So that is changing the color of the highlights and the shadows. Split toning is something that you can do with film photography. Uh, so it has a nice kind of vintage feel to it. For example, if I make the highlights red, increase those saturation, and the shadows blue, increase the saturation, we get this kind of uh, over-processed effect. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go back to zero on these. We do not need any split toning because I'm about to show you some presets. So if you don't wanna even play with these, you wanna just apply a filter, you don't wanna play with the more um, nitty gritty effects, you can just hover over these and check them out. We can do the matte, that's really film uh, photography friendly. I really like this turquoise and red one. It does that kind of split toning for you. Turquoise and red. Soft mist will actually kind of dehaze the entire image. So say you have an image that is kind of misty. If you use this, the details will come through more clearly. Ooh, that's kind of nice. The aged photo was good too and reminds me of Kindle's original edit, although this is more intense. And then we have a bunch of black and white as well. There's also more specific 
um, filters for specifically curve effects and grain and sharpening and such. So we have that cross-processing or over-processing. So it's pretty cool. You can play with those as you see fit. But let's go back to our normal uh, set, our basic set of edits. And I'm just going to do a specific edit right on this figure because we want to lighten him up a little bit. So one way to do that is to come over here to this brush tool up here at the top. You can save your own presets too after you've done a bunch. Yes, that's great. So you don't have to do the work over and over again. Mia says this is a really cool image. Yes, thank you, Kindle, for letting us use it. Go check out Kindle's photography. I think it's kindle.plant on Instagram. So how do you add presets? You can show you. Get out of this. Come over here, click this hamburger icon right here, and you can load or save settings. There you go. All right, let's go back to this brush. And you'll notice now my cursor is a crosshair and I can use my bracket keys to increase the size or decrease the size, or I can come here, increase or decrease. Oops. We don't want it to be too feathered because we want it to be pretty much focused right on our figure. And I'm actually gonna turn on the mask so you can see what I'm doing. So let me paint over him. The mask fills in everywhere that we are not going to be adjusting. Looks pretty good. And now let's turn off the mask. Let's increase the exposure just a little bit. Boom, now our figure is nice and visible. We could go really hard and it's almost like there's a, a filter right on him. Or underexposed so he's like a shadow. But we just wanna bump it up a tiny bit just so he becomes more of a focal point. You can even do this with colors. So say I do a, a color picker of this red and I could increase the saturation of that red and it would increase across the entire image. A real hamburger does sound good right now. Yeah, that hamburger icon always looks delicious. Okay, cool. So this is why we made a smart object in the beginning. If you are working on a smart object layer, when you do a filter, it becomes a smart filter which means you can turn it on and off as you see fit. So this is on, this is off, turn it back on. And you can also mask it as you see fit. So if we zoom in here using a black brush, I can erase my edits, maybe get rid of some of these light pixels around him so that it doesn't look like there's like an aura around him, but it's really just he is selected enlightened back on off on off cool so if I had a little more time I'd probably want to go into these actual signs and maybe adjust the exposure of them a little bit so they might be a little underexposed so that they're a little more legible maybe I would underexpose them but increase the vibrance so they're super bright these colors down here are super interesting to me so maybe I'd bump up the saturation of them as well but for now, this is good. Not too intense of an edit, but works for me. And now I'm going to save this. Save as. We will say day five edit. And let's place this in our template so we can get it uploaded onto Behance. So it's just kind of like a spotlight. Yeah, it lightens him just a little bit. And feel free to go even more ham, even more heavy handed with the editing. I wanted to keep it pretty light handed and just a little tweak today. All right, let's place embedded. Place our edited PSD. I'm going to grab a corner hold option. And drag this below our text. Now we want our figure to be visible, so I'll drag it down even more. And that play at home isn't super visible right behind or on top of that. So we could move it just a bit more. There we go. I like that. 
All right, let's export this, get it up on Behance. We're gonna go to export, export as. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller since it is gonna be in a photo grid and you're not gonna see it that large. You could put a lens flare on that person like they're on fire. <laughs> Can sketches be done in Photoshop? Of course, Harsha, especially if you're using like a tablet. It's a great sketching uh, program. All right, let's call this day five final. And first, before I go on Behance, let's upload it onto Discord so I can show you how that is done. We're gonna click this little plus sign within the current challenge channel. Let's go to day five, day five final. Here's my light edit. Can't wait to see yours. And props to Kendall again. Thank you, Kendall, for letting us use your beautiful photo. Whoops, wrong one. Alrighty, so we're gonna get those uploaded onto Discord and then we will go to our profiles and edit our project that we've been building. So to edit a project, you're gonna hover over the cog, click edit. Edit, edit, edit. And let's edit our photo grid. So we're gonna go to edit grid. So much editing going on. We're gonna delete day five. We're gonna add our new file. Uh, where am I going? There we go, nope, April. Yeah, thank you Sam for the shout out, appreciate it. All right, we have our day five and it's super easy to reorder your items. All you do is grab it, move it, done. So there we go. It looks nice paired with this other uh, photograph that we edited on the second day. So save it there. Kendall says, have fun with the photos, everyone. Can't wait to see what you make with it. Yeah, definitely. If you post it on Instagram, tag Kendall so that she can see. Tag me too, why not? <laughs> So for the rest of the day, we are going to be having even more streams. Let me show you the schedule for the upcoming day. If you uh, scroll be beneath the video player, you can check out what's coming. So right after me, Val is going to be coming up with a fresco and Photoshop uh, mashup with Paul Tranny. Wow, a dual stream. That's super cool. And then at 1130, Julia is going to be here for the uh, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, followed by... Elise doing some XD things. It's going to be super cool with Andrea. So that's another um, dual stream. And then Jesse's going to be on with his XD daily creative challenge. I'm going to be back at 2.30 for sketch party. So if you want to just have some fun sketching and illustrating together, come back then. And then Ben Marriott, a super awesome motion graphics producer and designer is going to be here at 3.30. So that's very cool. And you can always scroll down here and check out people who are just streaming to their Behance profiles. So Clarence is super cool. He was doing some compositing yesterday. I was watching that a little bit, or maybe it was Saturday. But yeah, okay, we've got Val in the chat, super exciting. Again, if you do wanna join us on Discord, you can do so. My head's too big today. bit.ly slash PS Discord if you wanna join us. It's open 24 seven. We're always hanging out over there, having a good time. And then I am going to see you all at 2.30, but then also tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time for another challenge. It might be um, a little interesting. We might go cross-platform. You'll have to come back and see. So I will see you later on today, everybody. Goodbye.